Welcome, Motenta people. Serious, resolute, versatility, confident, and sexually liberated. The few words that best describe the qualities of Norma Shearer, the famous pre-code Hollywood starlet, and her ambitious drive to stardom. With six Oscar nominations and one win, she was able to establish her creative talent as a dramatic actor, despite criticism, rejection, and related circumstances that almost stopped her fame. But Norma Shearer, the first woman to be single and not a virgin on screen. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Motentus channel. A Small Girl with a Big Heart – How Norma Shearer Forced Her Way to Stardom Norma Shearer proved to her audience that she was in Hollywood for nothing but the acting business. If she must succeed, she must learn to overcome obstacles with her adaptable talent, including the sexy ones that endeared her to fans. Shearer is one of those who did not mind societal consequences in her pursuit of fame as she deviated somehow from the ideal to create a career impact in what she believed. Her success was not just about her beauty, but the fact that she was willing and ready to take her chances. I guess no one would question that Norma Shearer was one of Hollywood's leading actresses in the Golden Age movies. How she got that spot made her a genius. Even after the one person she trusted to approve her career initially told her she would not make it in the industry. So how did she get her stardom? Maybe her extraordinary effort and good work ethic. Perhaps dynamism and talent made her conveniently switch roles in different genres. She was also an easygoing lady with her sexual life, with some saying that it may have given her an upper hand against the competition. Shearer's fruitful career, which began in the silent era, and successfully transitioned into the Golden Age Hollywood talkie, was as interesting as her personality. Making her film debut as a bit character in the 1919 The Star Border, she rose from there to become one of MGM's leading stars. The move away from the silent era did not affect her career, like some stars of the time, because she remained a box office attraction all throughout the 1930s. And between 1932 and 1935, she was ranked in Quigley's poll of the top box office stars for three consecutive years. In 1942, she took a bow from the industry, not necessarily because of the failure of We Were Dancing and Her Cardboard Lover at the box office. That production, however, was just among the few Norma Shearer's films to flop in years. Her name may not be popular today, but some of us still regard her as much more successful compared to the many well-known actors. Apart from her ambition, talent, and enthusiasm, she was opportune to have a movie genius around her. The person of Irving Thalberg, her husband, helped in many areas of her career. If only the Ziegfeld man who questioned her beauty had a little preview of her future. I guess the opinion would have been much different because Norma's creativity in movies is the type that will make contemporary fans want to watch her, even with the monocolor screen. The First Lady of MGM, as she was fondly called, is one unique Canadian-American actress who blazed the trail in classic films, and together with her MGM director brother, Douglas, made history as the Oscar-winning brother and sister. She is the first actress to be nominated five times in acting for the Academy Award. Someone once said that she started a career as a good girl in silent films shifted the sexually liberated roles of the pre-code and became the go-to careless, sexy actress. She later traced her footsteps back to more modest roles following the advent of code enforcement. Interestingly, each of her appearances, regardless of the genre, had a way of wowing her audiences. The esteemed movie The Barretts of Wimpole Street, produced by Thalberg, readily comes to mind. Shearer may have been forgotten because of the passage of time, but she is one of cinema's feminist pioneers. She is seen today as the first American actress to make it stylish and conventional to be single and not a virgin on the screen. Very remarkable about Shearer is that she nursed the idea of becoming an entertainer as early as nine when she had a bird's eye view of a vaudeville show in her village. It wasn't long before she found herself in movies, and today everyone will remember that she was a part of the Big V Beauty Squad. Edith Norma Shearer was born in 1902. 
Most of her childhood memory dates back to life in Montreal, where she got her basic education at the girls-only Montreal High School and Westmount High School, respectively. It was fun for little Shearer growing up under a father who was doing well in the business construction industry. Though the same would not be said of her parents' marriage, as her caring father, Andrew Shearer, had depression-related mental issues that disturbed the family, including little Shearer. Fisher, her mother, was described as an attractive and flamboyant lady, possibly living a free lifestyle life for herself and touring event centers and shows that met her fancy. She took little Norma to a vaudeville show to celebrate her nine years. The atmosphere, Norma later recalled, inspired her to take an acting career. Expectedly, her stylish mother would agree and push her in that line. But they had some challenges, more about Norma Shearer's physical defects, which Shearer once talked about as not too palatable, especially a skew in her right eye amidst her vicious ambition. She would find a way to overcome the challenge if it means disguising her face and adding charm to herself. She was still strategizing when the tragic news of her father's company collapsing hit her like a plague, an incident that changed the cause of things in the family, from healthy living to a life of poverty. But it's only a matter of time before her dream becomes a reality because the hard life that resulted made her more resolute in her passion. Typical of her kind of character, Edith, her mother, did not hesitate to abandon her husband and move with her two daughters to another location. Luckily, she had a big brother in showbiz who encouraged Norma to try her luck in the movies. The situation became dicey and desperate forcing her mother to sell Norma's piano to raise cash for a journey to New York City after obtaining a recommendation letter for Norma from a local theater. The mission was to meet Florence Ziegfeld, who advertised a new season of his famous Ziegfeld Follies. Unfortunately, Norma met disappointment with Ziegfeld's project, which was her initial target. The Ziegfeld Follies boss was not satisfied with what he saw of her appearance, a major knock against Norma. Ziegfeld was said to have referred to her as a dog because of her look. Shearer brushes off the comment because she believed in herself. Again, the need for survival was more important than anything else. She soon took a job as a model and joined a casting agency before she got bit roles. But very remarkable was how she was able to win that role. Shearer had stormed the audition venue where more than 50 nice-looking ladies were jostling for the same role in the film and the studio needed just a minor number. The casting manager needed the most beautiful lady with a nice shape for the role. You can imagine how Shearer may have felt at the time, but she didn't give up. She roamed through the crowd and waited for an opportunity. The moment she was waiting for came when the manager was a meter or so away from her. What did she do? Norma employed creativity by making a jockey sound that attracted the recruiter. As both eyes met, she smiled. Of course, charmed the man with her aura. One thing led to another, and she simply won the part. Now closer to her dream, Shearer was ready to utilize every opportunity to advance her career. She had met famous director D.W. Griffith when she had the opportunity about her ambitions. Being an expert in the industry, Griffith frankly told her that she'll never make it in the film industry with such a face. Norma said after hearing about this, she decided to do something that would change the prophecy because it was difficult to accept that she may never become a star, even if she corrected the skew in her eye and worked on her teeth. So, she went for career mentorship. Self-confident Norma was more optimistic than Griffith's opinion, so she continued working on herself, including having appointments with medical experts and related consultants so she could fit in. Specifically, Dr. William Bates, a leading eye treatment specialist, had given her a prescription. Determination indeed leads to success, as Norma strictly adhered to recommended eye muscle strengthening exercises, which she practiced many hours daily for years before she got some positive results. The following years would be busy ones for her, as she scouted Broadway theaters and learned from top stage actresses of the time. She was augmenting her expenses with income from modeling, where she spent hours promoting consumer goods like auto tires. Her aggressive activities in this area were said to have earned her a trailer named Miss Lotta Miles. 
After doing some minor roles in East Coast movies, as seen in A Clouded Name and Channing of the Northwest, she attracted the attention of many with her young and stylish talent, including young and talented producer Irving Thalberg. As soon as Thalberg joined Louis B. Mayer in 1923, Norma was top of his list of actresses, so he invited her. As Norma headed to Los Angeles, she was expecting to meet a studio executive that day, but was stranded after arriving on a train. She waited for hours without any success and ended up on a taxi ride back home. She was already accustomed to disappointment, so it was nothing to worry about. It wasn't long before she signed a five-year contract with MGM, a move that signals the beginning of bigger fame. Naturally, and still about that fortunate eye of hers, she had little difficulty with screen tests until she developed a special camera light skill. Her face became a subject of debate as two directors expressed concern that Shearer might not be suitable for the kind of beauty expected on camera and equally don't have acting skills. Instinctively, the MGM boss adopted a special test on her to see for himself. With her newfound camera trick, Shearer was said to have spoken confidently with B. Mayer saying, I'll show you. You'll see it. As she mounted the stage for a destiny-deciding performance test. What happened next? She won. Hooray! She got significant attention and soon gained important roles in movies. Her performance in The Wolfman gave her a lot of credit that saw her appearing in metro golden Mayer's first official studio production in 1924, He Who Gets Slapped, after the studio began operation that year. Of course, fortune smiled on her as she quickly turned to one of MGM's huge box office fascinations. The first time Norma Shearer saw Thalberg in the studio, she thought the young wonder boy of MGM who was in his 20s was an errand boy. Thalberg, who was a vice president of Louis B. Mayer Production and one who spotted and discreetly recommended her to the studio, was impressed by her morale, just as Shearer was astonished by his simplicity. Maybe love or similar chemistry shrouded the atmosphere. How did Norma achieve such a fit? Norma made about 13 pictures within the first four years with MGM. All were box office successes. Her first big budget production was Anch Lubitsch's The Student Prince in Old Heidelberg in 1927. But before this time, a lot of things happened. Whether Norma was perfect for Louis B. Mayer or just her association with Thalberg that kept her waxing stronger within the period were all speculations that trended in the gossip media, even as she quickly rose to stardom with her film roles. Shearer became accustomed to Thalberg. She would go to his office to beg for juicy roles. Though he recognized her ability, Thalberg was also not willing to bend the rules. She tried all her tricks, including occasional burst into tears to appeal to his emotion. All her sobs were only creating a stronger bond between them. The duo started making public appearances together, as seen in Charlie Chaplin's film premiere. They were beginning to like each other, though unofficially as they both dated different persons at the time. But some events occurred later to change the course of things for the two. She changed her faith to Judaism and married Thalberg. And so it was time for him to properly make her a star. A writer who commented on this stated that Thalberg, with his choice of camera angles, made a beauty and a star out of Shearer. She had a few hurdles to overcome, too, if she must increase her stardom. Norma became selective in her roles, actors, and those to direct her movie, enjoying her advantage. Her positive partnership in the studio was annoying to some, but Shearer was more focused on her career dream, just like her husband. It is impossible to accomplish something big without stepping on toes, she once lamented as she defended her action. When the talkies came with the help of Douglas, Norma was ready and determined to cross over successfully, and she did it when she appeared in MGM's first talkie, The Trial of Mary Dugan, in 1929. Her voice was widely applauded, and the film also became a big success. Thalberg's creative ingenuity in the studio over more experienced directors gave him an edge, and partnering with Norma in such a positive manner made her a happy star, as she became fondly known as the first lady of the screen. Expectedly, there was a feeling of dislike against her for commanding such an advantage of being the wife of the boss. Actress Joan Crawford particularly felt jealous that Norma was pulling major roles from her. 
in The Divorcee, which also gave Shearer an Oscar for Best Actress. It caused a heated rivalry. Norma's marriage with Thalberg produced two children. She once halted her career as Thalberg suffered a heart attack. When she got back to action, it was a new era of code, so her roles in movies changed, and she successfully adapted to it. Now a star, Norma Shearer joined the Hollywood love life, dating some notable actors, and her sexual free styling became remarkable. She married a second husband, Martin Erosh, and was reported to have suffered some kind of depression in the later part of her life before her death was announced in 1983 from bronchial pneumonia. To succeed in Hollywood, you had to be deeply determined, but even success has not meant happiness for many. Why was Robert Young deeply unhappy inside? You have to find out.